What's up, everybody? Welcome back. It's part two of the Road to Apocalypse X-Men Marathon movie. And today we are going to talk about X2, X-Men United. This believe I came out in 2003. Um, this was like one of the sequels to all sequels so far. Um, I know I said I was going to give a list, early, a list earlier, but this is still probably by far my favorite X-Men movie. Um, because it's, it's, it gave me so much of what I wanted to see from what I previously known from X-Men in comic books or the cartoon, which is still probably my favorite top things of all time. Um, but uh, we're going to start off with simple, uh, a simple list right quick. First for me was the intro to the film, Nightcrawler. They gave us our intro to Nightcrawler um, and the attack at the uh, White House. Still probably one of the best intros to an actual movie that I've ever seen before. Uh, just the way he's able to bam from the the front of the house all the way to basically almost getting the president. Um, I thought that was a gr very great way to bring Nightcrawler into the X-Men universe. Um, I would like to know why he didn't show up in any of the other X-Men's after that until um, we see him in Apocalypse. And uh, just, just the way that they were able to shoot the Oval Office scene with the camera spinning around and giving the illusion that there's one person that's able to take down all 20 people in this room. And I thought that was very fantastic. Uh, to 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 ramp up the action that was in the previous X Men film. Uh, the story uh, was able to expand on the kids in this one, not so much just Rogue, but they actually expanded the story of Bobby and his friend John, who ends up becoming Pyro. Um, I thought that they were that that was good to to incorporate them into the story, considering the fact they are the younger of all of the X Men, but they they're the oldest of the classes, but the youngers. And I thought that was really cool for them to bring that into the, the the different aspects from them to and what it was like when Bobby's family actually found out he was a mutant, uh, how they reacted to it, I think, is basically how any other family would have reacted when you think your son's going to the school for the gifted for one thing, which you're, you're assuming is academics or, you know, anything that has to do with, uh, you know, science maybe related, but then find out that he's really actually there because he's a mutant. And the, the fact that he was able to hide that from his parents for so long, um, I thought that brought a different aspects that I believe a lot of families probably would have gone through. And the fact that, hey, uh, the reason why I'm going to this school is because I'm a mutant. Um, the next thing I have is the struggle with Jean Grey's powers. Throughout this one, I thought that... You could tell throughout the entire movie, it was just inching you closer to the one thing that everybody wanted to see, which was ultimately her unleash her phoenix powers at the end of the film. So I thought that that was a good thing, being able to tr to, to play back and forth with her powers, you know, with uh, Cyclops telling her earlier that, you know, she had to concentrate just to move a book across the room versus when she's able to destroy missiles, you know, that are actually tracking the actual X-Jet and which led it to the um, ultimate Phoenix scene when she was able to help kickstart the jet to get away while she was sacrificing herself, which we all know she wasn't really, she's not dead. We all, we all know that uh, because that was how she awakened her Phoenix powers. So I thought, obviously, that's still one of the highlights of the film. Um, Magneto's escape and mystique's plan leading up to that escape that is still another one of those one two combos where magneto makes mystique and mystique makes magneto um a definitely a good one two punch just the way she was able to infiltrate multiple places just to get some metal inside a guy or a little bit of lead iron in his blood actually and then just the fact of what he can do with just three metal balls he was able to tear down everything, build one thing, and take out two other people. Um, so I thought that was actually a really cool escape scene for them as well. But uh, is it just me, or is Cerebro entirely too easy to break into? I know that in the first one, obviously Mystique was able to change into looking like Professor X, but if just regular humans have the technology to get into it, bruh, come on. Come on now. It's time to fix that up a little bit. Kind of tighten up that security. I'm on Cerebra. But obviously the number one thing that I loved in this X-Men film is we get our first look at Berserker Rage Logan. 
during the scene the the X Mansion invasion was really good for me. That was really shot very well. Uh, this the fact that this is the first time, and actually from all of the other X Men films, um, which is something that has been downplayed a lot. I thought that the way that X that Wolverine was able to take out the guards that invaded the mansion was fantastic. He was angry the entire time. He knew that he had to protect the kids, and I just thought that it was just blind rage that he wanted to. He, you know, when he's telling uh, Colossus or everybody to just leave me alone, he wanted to do that. It, it was just so fantastic to see all the rage that was being, you know, that was being dispersed to all of the other soldiers in the film and I thought that just Hugh Jackman just nailed it again as this film's centric character not main character but centric character to carry like carry up the you know that bring the audience along with we're experiencing all new things as he is as well you know finally seeing the full uh origins of how he got the claws uh, he's starting to remember more and more things as obviously he doesn't know everything just because he remembers everything doesn't know he knows everything and the, the the back and forth between him and Stryker, especially the very first time they meet, I saw was very well. He he, he found like he felt like I felt like he was like a lost puppy, and he was looking at someone. He's like, I think I know you, but I do I know your name, but I don't know you. So I thought obviously that scene was very powerful. Uh, let's see, we where he went through the Phoenix, and then the last thing I have on my list is the. Obviously, it's Magneto and Charles. Still, um, even though they were only in one scene, or you know, outside of Cerebro later, but in the prison scene, they were only in one scene together in this film. And once again, that little quick one and a half, two minute scene still gave me the sense of their friendship. However, they still need to do what they feel that they need to do. You're going to be the anti-equation. I'm going to be the equation. That's just how it's going to be. We're going to be yin and yang the entire time. Obviously, Magneto was still under Stryker's control at the time, but it still was It was still awesome because he was still Magneto at his core, trying to tell him how he truly feels about things. And obviously, that's, that's, probably, that's still going to carry on in all of the other X-Men films, no matter who's playing Magneto. Once we get to the Magneto and Professor X, once we even get to those films that core relationship still is what holds this movie together for me and that's with all of them now next we will be doing uh x-men the last stand um it's gonna be rough sitting through that again but i will do it um just for you guys uh feel free to hit that subscribe button give me some notes on what you guys thought about x-men 2 which one is your favorite so far what's your favorite scenes in this movie what are your least favorite scenes in this movie uh don't forget to follow me at daryl smith just d-a-r-o-l s-m-i-t-h or and nerdcore movement and i'm going to be getting into this movie soon and i will be putting my next review up for you guys so next one will be coming up x-men last stand peace